I would like to welcome you all to our Explore Trent Science Facilities session. We're excited to show you all of the resources available when you're taking a science program here at Trent. I'm Michelle and I will be the moderator of this session. And with me today, there are student ambassadors in forensics, biology, chemistry, and nursing labs to talk about their hands-on learning experiences within the lab environments. Each student has a unique experiential learning experience that speaks to the variety of opportunities that are available here at Trent. So if you have not already heard from the other sessions, to all our prospective students joining us, just by joining this event today, you have been entered into a draw to win free first year tuition. And the same happens every time you interact with Trent at one of our recruitment events. So keep your eyes peeled for that. It's a great opportunity to get your name into the draw more than once. Now to get this session started, we will have a series of questions that I have prepared for our panelists in each of the labs to answer. And following that panel period, the floor is open to you to ask questions directly to our students with firsthand experiential learning opportunities. And we will spend about 10-ish minutes exploring each of the lab facilities. So with that, let's get started. And we are going to head over to our forensics facility. Hi everyone, my name is Nicholas and I'm a third year student in the Forensic Science and Joint Major program. Um, I'm doing a joint major with psychology as well. I'm really excited to show you guys um, the place I'm in right now. So right now we are in the new Forensic Crime Scene facility. There's only one of a kind in Canada, which is really amazing. Um, it's really cool because in my first year, we actually had a crime scene house. It was a bit of a smaller place, so a little bit older, but now we actually have this amazing facility with four different areas that we can work in. We have our seminar room, which we're in right now. We even have a mock crime scene area that even has movable walls so we can kind of change up the crime scene to how we like it. We have a garage area, which we'll also show you later. And we even have an outdoor space for just other students to work as well. Um, what I actually have in front of me is just an example of just some of the um, work that we do in our impression labs. So as you can see to my left, you have just a few photos of some footwear impressions that you can kind of see. Um, if you move a little bit more to the right, we usually have a footwear impression that was even placed on a tile as well. Um, also with the scientific markings that we have um, each forensic science student or just each student put in general. And then even more to the right, we even have just a 3D mold of an impression as well. Um, and honestly, this whole lab and just having all this hands-on experience has really just enriched just my time here at Trent University and just my you know personal experience just throughout the program as well. Because just having that ability just to really be hands-on, really just relate kind of what I'm learning to what I might do later on in the field. It's just really awesome. Um, so yeah, I'm just really excited to show you guys what we're doing here and what we have over here. Next, we're actually gonna take you guys just to our mock crime scene area where Nessa will be showing you guys a bit more about that. Hi everyone, my name is Nessa and I'm also a third year here at Trent University. I'm majoring in forensic science. I'm here to show you guys our moving crime scene room. So, um, sorry, that's not my apologies. That's, this is the mock crime scene room. It's just that we have the moving walls here, which is something that I definitely want to point out for you guys because it's a really great aspect of this new facility. If you guys want to follow me a little bit in here, we're actually able to set up a lot of different mock crime scenes in here, which is really cool. Back in my first year, we actually had the crime scene house, but this just allows us to change up the different scenes that we have available to our students a little bit easier, and it gives us a lot more variety with the moving walls as well. You guys saw the office area here. We actually have some living room areas in here as well. Something that I definitely want to point out for you guys is in this room. If you guys see the little solo cups over here, as well as the beer bottle, that's actually um, surfaces that you guys could dust fingerprints off of. That was a really fun thing when I was in first year and even in my third year now. And you guys will get a lot of experience when coming to try and dust fingerprints, which will really help you if you want a career in like forensics work, policing, anything like that. Because then when you actually go out in the field, you'll have a lot of experience and hands-on learning in actually dusting fingerprints. I'm actually gonna show some fingerprints that we have um, set up for you guys over here. So these are some fingerprint identification cards. You guys can kind of see the prints and things like that, the patterns that you guys have available. So we just have um, you guys looking at that right now. When you guys actually look over here to this solo cup, so this is actually the prints that were already dusted and developed. 
and you see like they're circled, they're labeled, they have the little scales on them as well. So you would actually dust them just using these brushes right here. They usually come pre-dusted like, or like with the black powder on them. When you're actually in the lab, which is really nice, you know, it makes it a little bit easier for cleanup and everything for you guys. Um, when you guys dust the fingerprints and everything, you actually have the tape here. That's what you guys actually put onto the surface of the print. And then when you guys lift the tape, it will actually look just like this. And then you're able to actually see the print again with the scale and everything. You can then put that under this magnifying glass that we have here and actually look at all the ridge characteristics, match them to suspects, known samples that we do have, which is, again is really cool because in my first year anyway, we got to match those to suspects, again, known samples, and actually kind of put together kind of a who done it type of thing. So, you know, we had a presentation looking at all of those things, which again was one of my favorite things of coming to Trent. We get a lot of the hands-on experience, which I think is really great and really beneficial to everyone's spiritual learning because you have a lot of experience before you go out into the real field. And even just things like practicing, making those presentations, you know, those lab assignments that really help prepare you for writing other papers and doing other assignments as well. So it really just gets you into the mindset of being a student and going out into the real world. With that, we are actually going to head over to Nicholas now, though, and go see the garage space. Hello, and welcome to one of the garage spaces that we have. Um, honestly, this is a really awesome space. It's really beneficial, too, because even during our lab, we will have pretty much every week. Um, it's pretty convenient just to have all the space necessary just to basically conduct um, just the experiments that we just need to conduct in the lab. So definitely having this extra space here is just super beneficial. Again, we also have an outdoor space, which unfortunately won't be able to show today, um, but that the facility is great. We have tons of things that we can do. And um, um, thank you, Michelle, for letting us share this. Hey, Nick, sorry to interrupt, but you're a little hard to hear. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, can you slow Perfect. down just a tiny bit and 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 speak up a tiny bit? We don't want to miss anything you're saying. Thanks. <laughs> Got you. No worries. So again, this is just our garage space. Um, so it's really awesome just having this space because even when we do our labs, it just basically means that there's just more locations we can go just to conduct the experiments we need to do during our lab sessions. Um, especially since you may have like you know a few more students in the class, it's really good just to kind of have your own space and just enough space to do what you need to do. Um, so I just wanted to say just thank you again for letting us show this awesome facility, Sasha and Michelle. Um, let's get back to you guys. All right. Thank you so much, Nick and Nessa over at Forensics. That was definitely a great tour and give us some great insight into what you do, especially in first year, but also in the years following. So now I'd like to pass it over to biology, where we have Sabrina, who's going to talk a little bit about her experience in the biology lab. So Sabrina, I just want to start off with a question. Can you tell us any interesting or unique features about the learning space that you're in? I, I definitely see some human bones and different sculptures. And to be fair, I don't know a lot about biology. So please enlighten me and share that information. Hi, so my name is Sabrina. I'm a fourth year student in the biology program. Um, and I'm actually specializing in conservation biology. In this lab, it's actually one of our genetics labs. Um, we've got some microscopes, a lot of those, so we can view cells. Um, we've got some human skeleton replicas, so you can identify different bones in the body. Um, we've also got a taxidermy bird here for any of our bird lovers and interested in ornithology. Um, and here's a, a replica of some internal organs from um, a human body. No, it's definitely, I love that it's showing such a wide variety of the types of biology and different courses that you can take. And can you tell me a little bit about what kind of experiments or, or different activities students in their first year will conduct in biology? Yeah, so our first semester biology course is kind of um, focused more on nature. And one of the labs that I really enjoyed there was going out into the field and looking at different plant species and seeing how species change um, as soil changes and stuff like that. Another really fun lab that I remember from first year was um, with relation to exercising. So we would kind of do some exercise and see how different um, parts of the body would change. So if our temperature would change and um, if our, if our um, oxygen consumption would change. So that was really fun to kind of 
see how different things in real life can be put into an experiment and um, how you can learn from it in, in a lab setting. That's awesome. And you said that you were able to kind of go out in the field. Is that on Trent property? Did you guys go on trips? How exactly did that work? Yeah, so it really depends for the course. One of the favorite courses that I've taken um, in my undergrad is fish ecology, where we actually went, we put on hip waders, we went out in the river and uh, we caught some fish. So that's kind of along the Autonomy River that runs right through Trent's campus, which is really awesome because um, we don't have to go very far for our labs. Uh, and other labs that we do, like we'll go on hikes and look at the trees and kind of um, count tree species and, and do identification there. And there are some labs where we've take, taken field trips to different wetlands to investigate species and different uh, plants there as well. Very cool. And I know when I was studying, I did geography as well. So we would go to like Jackson Park and different local areas in Peterborough and connect with uh, local businesses and NGOs to see about the environment and learn how everything worked within the Peterborough area. So it was a nice way to get outside of the lab, but also have that hands-on experience. And can you tell me a little bit mo uh, about your most memorable moment in the lab? So as I just said, uh, my most memorable, memorable moments aren't actually in the lab. They're kind of out in the field when we when we go do field work. Um, so as I said, you know, fish ecology was a really fun class for me. We went and caught fish, um, but then we brought them back into the lab and we got to age them uh, and we got to kind of measure them and see if we could find trends for the different species populations. And it's just really nice to be able to go out into the lab to get that experience gathering data, but also coming back in and analyzing that data and seeing how everything kind of fits together. No, that's amazing to hear. And um, I think a lot of students or prospective students today in this in this group might be wondering what the difference is between high school biology and moving into university biology. Can you give us a little bit of an idea of how that transition was for you and how you went through that? I think the transition, um, it was it was pretty good because first year biology is kind of just gradually adding on to what you've learned in high school biology. But I think the hands-on aspect of being in university is a really good advantage compared to what you get in high school. Because um, I found in high school, like we did a few labs in the class, but there wasn't as much field work and hands-on experience doing stuff out in the field and collecting data. It's more kind of a, an in-depth, gets you an in-depth understanding of how science really works. Very cool. And from there, I have another question for you. So speaking that we're coming from high school to university now, what made you choose Trent for biology? Was there anything, a, a drawing factor that drew you in? Did you come for a tour? Did somebody tell you about the biology program? What really stood out to you before saying, okay, Trent is the school for me? So I'm from Peterborough and I've grown up around the area. So I'm really familiar with the Autonomy River and all the nature around campus. And I just love that Trent is such, such an outdoors campus. There it's very pretty, like there are trees everywhere, um, and it's very kind of immersed in nature. And I know that, you know, Trent is the number one undergrad university in Ontario. So having the biology, doing a biology degree here kind of just made sense because biology is integrated throughout the campus. Um, and it's, it's really, a, it's a great program, very hands-on. No, that's amazing to hear. Definitely based on the spaces that we have it at Trent, both indoors and out, it's, it's one of the schools to study biology at for sure. Um, one other question I have for you is, can you touch a little bit on the difference between lab time and seminar time and classes and lectures and how that structure works in biology? Yeah, so usually we have um, one for per class, there'll be one lecture time and one lab time. So you'll have probably about two hours of lecture per week where your professor will just be kind of giving you the material that you need to have a background on the labs and stuff. Um, so that'll be really the content that you'll be mostly studying for your exams. Um, and then you'll have usually a three hour lab slot where you're gonna be putting to use everything that you're learning in lecture and using that information to see what it's like to be a biologist. Um, and I think that's the best part about our biology courses is the labs where you can again, really use the information that you're learning in your lectures. Awesome. And I'm just going to ask Zachary, while you're filming the lab, do you mind showing us a pan of the entire lab just so we can see a little bit more than one area? For sure. We are going to swoop around here. Nice and slow. So we get all the nice features of the lab. 
You'll see the long workbenches here, so you can work along other students. A um, couple whiteboards on the other end. And this side is pretty well a replica here. Um, so another workbench here. Um, the hood vent, I believe that's called, <laughs> when you're doing experiments with chemicals. Uh, and then just continuing around the classroom. Um, so just a little QBs here. So, so things are staying nice and tidy in the lab. So when you're coming in with different objects and backpacks, those all stay off to the side to keep everything nice and clean. Uh, but it is really a nice, simple lab here. Yeah, and then here we've got our sink with the beakers and um, all our test tubes. All right, amazing. Thank you for that. All right, another fun fact about sciences that I'd like to share with everybody on this call today is that a lot of the sciences are done on our East Bank of campus. So you've probably heard that our campus is divided into East and West Bank. So East Bank is typically where the science labs are. That's where our DNA building is, our new forensic crime scene facility. So that's kind of where it's based out of. All right, thank you, biology. And now I think we're going to shift on over to chemistry and see what Dia has to say. Hi everyone, I'm Dia and I'm a third year biomedical sciences student, um, but I've taken a bunch of chemistry courses, so I have all the information you need. Uh, we are in the chemistry lab right now in the chemical sciences building and I'm really excited to show you around today. Awesome. Can you tell us a little bit more about the, the lab that you're in? What are some of the cool features? What's nearby? What equipment's there? Yeah, so this is a first year chemistry lab. Um, it's actually the biggest lab on campus. It holds about 36 students and um, you only do chemistry labs in this specific building. So that's an interesting feature of the building. Um, and yeah, if we want to turn around and show you some equipment just right here, um, we have some equipment present in the lab right here. And then hopefully we can turn around and show you the fume hoods that we have. Um, so there's the fume hoods right there. One another interesting feature is that when you take second year organic chemistry, you do all your labs exclusively in the fume hood. So this will be your second home in your second year. Very cool. And can you tell us some of the like cool activities or experiments that you've done with the, the fume hood? Yeah, um, so there is one experiment that I did in my organic chemistry lab. Um, and my enrollment advisor who's filming, he's also done it. So both of us shared our experiences. Um, it's the distillation lab in second year and it has a highly um, complicated apparatus that you have to have in the fume hood. And there was a bunch of pipes and hoses going around. Um, it was very complicated, but it, it was actually a lot of fun. And that's the first time I did a lab individually, not in a pair. So I actually got to use all the equipment myself. A bunch of hoses did break off during the experiment, but I only learned from it. Um, so the one good thing is that you get to use a lot of different equi equipment all alone by yourself, and that gives you a lot of experience. I love that you mentioned that messing up sometimes is part of that learning experience and that you're not going to be criticized for that, rather learn from it. That's awesome. Um, another question for you, what career are you interested in pursuing and how have the skills that you learned in class and in labs prepared you for that future career? So the labs that I'm doing are actually very relevant to the career I want to do. Um, personally, I want to go into research. So being in the lab itself is a great experience for me. I get to learn a lot of skills that I probably don't learn anywhere else, including just accuracy and precision and patience. You need a lot of patience when you're in a lab doing an experiment. Like you said, things can go wrong, but you just have to stick with it. And um, that's going to help my career in research. So all the skills that I've learned in the lab are definitely helpful for the future. And can you tell me about what your favorite lab was so far? I know you mentioned the fume hood and all the pipes, but is there anything beyond that that really struck you as interesting or unique or something you didn't necessarily think you'd have the opportunity to try until you actually got a job that you had the chance to do at Trent? Yeah, so um, this is actually a first year lab that I did that really stuck with me. Um, it's a qualitative lab that all first year students do in first year introductory chemistry. Um, all the other labs are very quantitative based. So that means that you get to measure a lot of stuff and you get to um, check the results but you don't actually get to see the results. But with the qualitative lab, you could you know, do the typical chemistry lab of mixing things together and looking at the different colors or different states or just the different ways that a chemical reacts and you can actually see it in real time. And that really stuck with me because one, you can see different colors and two, you can just um, 
kind of look at it and be able to understand what chemicals may be present in a test tube just by looking at what kind of state it's in. So I think that really stuck with me. And we've always learned about it in textbooks, but that's the first time I got to see it in real life. So it's a first year lab. So that really stuck with me. And that kind of cemented my interest in the program as well. Very cool. And the next few questions I have for you, it's similar to, to what I asked to biology, but what is different and what is the transition like from high school chemistry over to university chemistry? Is there any tips you can give to future students or, or things that you found helpful coming, coming into university? Yeah, so um, the one thing that's different from high school chemistry to university, and obviously it's a bit harder, but um, it's a lot more real life application based as compared to high school. So at least personally in high school, I learned a lot of theory based chemistry and I didn't necessarily get to see that in real life. But when you come to university, you're going to be able to talk to your professors and you're going to be able to maybe observe their labs and do real life experiments or help with their research. And you actually get to apply all the concepts that you've learned in real life. So there is so the university level is just one step ahead in terms of practicality of your concepts. Um, what's the other question? Sorry. No, that's awesome. You answered it for me, just telling me that difference between high school and university. And of course, it's always scary going from high school to university, but it's nice to know that you have your professors on your side, your classmates, and everyone's going through the same thing together. Yeah, and it's it's also, like I said, very practical based. So I don't think I've done a lot of labs in high school in terms of chemistry. Like maybe I did one or two, but I did bi-weekly labs here every, um, so every two weeks I did a lab here and that kind of made me able to understand all the things I'm learning in class as I was going with the concept. So you get to see what's happening and you can relate it back to class content and then you can go to your professors and talk to them. So it's a very experiential and wholesome learning. No, that's awesome. I love to hear it. Another question, same thing I asked biology. Can you talk a little bit about how the hours in the lab differs compared to how much you're spending in class or in lecture and what percentage of your time is in the lab? Yeah, so um, with chemistry, especially first year chemistry, typically you have three hour labs and these are bi-weekly. So you will have a one three hour time slot for a chemistry lab um, every two weeks. And the weeks that you don't have a lab, you have tutorials or seminars. And in these times, you can go to your TAs or your professors and discuss your lab reports with them or discuss the results of your lab with them in order to submit your assignments. So compared to the labs, um, usually chemistry lectures are maybe two hours per week and they're divided into like hourly lectures. So two lectures per week or maybe they're about three lectures per week. So there's a lot of lab time that you get and then the days that you don't have labs, you actually get to discuss these labs with your TAs. Um, so a lot of time is dedicated to labs and then the days you don't have labs, seminars or tutorials. All right, amazing. Last question I have for you, Dia. I know you didn't necessarily come to Trent for chemistry, but what would encourage someone or convince them to come to Trent for chemistry? What is that one feature that is just a drawing factor? I think the one thing that's great is our small lab sizes and our small class sizes. So like I said, this is the biggest lab that we have and it's a first year lab, but it's only 36 students. And that's the biggest number that we're ever gonna get. So in first year, you get to do a lab with a partner and it's not just you, maybe your TAs come in and your professors come in and they get to talk to you and actually do the experiments with you. So in a smaller lab size, you're able to ask all the questions you want without being scared or without you know having a lot of people crowding or without you know getting lost in the crowd so um smaller lab sizes are definitely a big plus for me especially for chemistry um as you go into your upper years the lab get the lab sizes get even smaller so in my second year um i did organic chemistry and i did all my labs individually so i think that was a great step from taking the help of a partner in first year to going to individually in second year and actually independently doing the labs so i think the one thing that i love is small lab sizes I think that's so common across all of the programs that run, not just the sciences. I know my first year, I think my biggest class was 100 and by fourth year, my biggest class was 10. So I think it definitely comes into play no matter what program you choose here at Trent. All right. Thank you, Dia, for sharing all about chemistry with us. Now I'd like to move on to our final lab for today, nursing. that. My apologies there. We're just going to flip that camera. No worries, John. Here we are. Amazing. And did you just want to introduce yourself, your program, and your year for us? 
Hi guys, my name is Julia. I'm in my third year of the collaborative program, nursing collaborative program here at Trent, and I'm really excited to show you guys around the nursing lab today. All right, amazing. Can you tell us a little bit about the lab that you're standing in right now? What is behind you? <laughs> yeah, so this is actually Hal, our good friend Hal. Uh, we have a whole bunch, we have kind of a whole family of mannequins that we use here um, to practice different skills on. Um, so how you can see you can practice um, tracheotomies on him, and um, I'm pretty sure you, you can also listen to his breath sounds and his heart sounds too, which is super cool. Um, so yeah, we have a lot of different mannequins and they do a bunch of different things as well. Very cool. And can you tell us a little bit about one activity that you've done, be it in your first year or second year, that was that stands out to you, that you learned the most, or that was a pivotal moment in your studies? There's so many that I could talk about, so many I could say. Um, I think your like first year labs are really great. Um, you focus a lot on doing like personal care and stuff like that, and I think it makes you feel really comfortable um, going into a clinical and going into practice and having those skills. Um, but also um, up your labs are really cool too. That's where you get into your really kind of exciting skills like doing IVs. Um, the lab today is actually set up for a third year lab tomorrow where they're gonna be practicing some IVs. So you can see we have our arm here and you can actually practice with an actual IV. So you'll get to do a bunch of injections and um, cool stuff like that. Um, so yeah, definitely lots of skills, like any skill you can think of, you can basically practice it in the lab, which is great. Well, that's super cool to see. I did not know that that takes place at Trent, um, yeah. be it that I'm an English major, but um, nursing students as well at Trent begin placement right from year one. So can you talk a little bit about how placement changes through the years and what you did first year versus what you're doing now? Yeah, so one cool thing about Trent nursing is that we start our placements earlier than a lot of schools. So you'll be in your first placement in second semester, and that's where you'll be doing um, kind of working with an older population, you'll be in retirement homes or long-term care. And that's a really great place to start, really good foundation. And you'll be focusing on doing a lot of like personal care, like I said, um, and stuff like that. And once you get into second year, you're gonna be taking part in your community placement, which is also a really interesting opportunity. Um, so you'll get to be placed with different agencies around Peterborough. We even have the opportunity to go to Honduras too, to do your placement there. So you'll be really focusing on like health promotion with that placement. And then in um, another, your other semester in second year, um, you'll be focusing on mental health and maternal health, which was such an interesting placement. Um, you get to do a lot of cool simulations and labs with those placements. And then in third year is when you get into your kind of really intense placements, you'll be doing your acute care and your chronic care. And that's where you'll be in the hospitals and you'll really be getting to see what it's like to work as a nurse in a hospital. I love that it changes each semester. That's very cool. You get a yeah. broad and vast experience as opposed to just that one um, item of focus. Yeah, exactly. It's really nice to kind of build upon your skills and you kind of get to feel more comfortable as you get to do each placement. And especially in fourth year is really cool because you can kind of go anywhere you'd like. You can go to different cities around Canada um, and you'll basically be placed one-on-one -on -one with a nurse and you'll be shadowing them and you'll really like be honing in on all those skills that you've learned over the past three years. And that'll be your last placement. Very cool. And can you tell me a little bit about how much time you spend in placement versus in class versus in the lab or, or what the breakdown is pretty much of the program? Yeah, so in first year, um, second semester, you'll start by doing labs and placement. Um, you'll typically have like, labs can be anywhere from an hour to three hours. Um, so for that first placement, you'll usually do one lab and then you'll have one day of placement. It'll usually be an eight hour shift. Um, and then the second year, you start to move up to having a couple of longer shifts. So maybe you'll do like two eight hour shifts and you'll also be in the lab too. Um, so usually each clinical course has an associated lab time with it. So you get to do lab and you get to do clinical, which is really great because you get to practice all those skills that you'll be doing in clinical um, in the lab. So you'll feel really comfortable. Um, and then in third year is usually when you do two like 12 hour shifts. So it's definitely the longest placement. Um, but it's definitely a really great um, experience and you get to learn a lot doing it. And I think a, probably a question on a lot of people's minds right now is what does COVID have to do with any of this? How does it work in, in a COVID ridden world? 
Yeah, so a lot of things have had to change because of COVID. First of all, one of the actually maybe one of the better things is that lab um, groups are smaller. So you have a lot more time with your lab demonstrator to go over those skills and really make sure that you're um, getting them down pat and you're feeling comfortable with them. Um, placements are definitely the things that have been most impacted. Um, I know when COVID kind of first hit, my placements were all put online. So we use this cool application called Shadow Health. Um, and while it's definitely not the same as being an actual placement, being in the hospital, um, it was really great to kind of continue to learn. So it's kind of like, it, I would almost like compare it to a video game. Um, it was really cool. You get to like interact with um, different patients with different conditions and really like learn about um, different diseases and um, stuff like that. Um, but in the upper years right now, they're trying their best to get everybody into the like, actual hospital so that they feel prepared to graduate and um, go in into the world of nursing. <laughs> That's amazing. And it seems like you've had some pretty amazing placement opportunities. Is there a moment, not necessarily actually doing something like inserting an IV or, or caring for someone, but is there like an interaction you've had with a patient or a professor that really stands out to you? Yeah, I think honestly, my first, very first placement, um, I was placed in a retirement home for a couple of weeks and this was before COVID. So we actually got to go in and um, talk to the different residents and I got paired with this one resident and she was the sweetest. And she just kind of taught me a lot about like feeling confident and feeling comfortable as a nursing student. You know, you're not expected to know everything, um, all you can do is kind of go in and try your best and um, do the best that you can. So she really made me feel like okay with not knowing everything and being a student and being open to learning. So I always think about her when I think of um, my placements. I love that. And just to kind of elaborate on that, what's the difference again between coming from high school sciences to nursing and university? It's definitely really different. Um, in your first year, you'll get to do um, some bio courses. So you'll do um, anatomy and physiology, which might be a little bit more similar to high school science, um, where you'll be like learning about the body and learning how everything works. Um, but definitely as the years go on, you'll be focusing more on how to kind of care for somebody and how, um, how that really impacts the body. Like, it won't be as much as learning about like um, different plants and stuff like that. You're gonna be learning about um, like human health, which is really interesting and really cool. Very cool. Okay, one more question for you. Why did you choose Trent for nursing? I'm sure there were other options on your table. What convinced you to come here? Um, it's funny, I was saying this earlier. I always get this question. Um, Trent was the only nursing program that accepted me, but, but, um, I'm so glad that that's the way it turned out. I love Trent. I love the nursing program and all the faculty here. I remember the first time I came to visit and I like walked into this very lab and I remember feeling like, okay, I feel so at home. Like this is where I want to be. Um, and it's just a great environment to be in. Everybody's very welcoming and it's just a very great sense of community, especially within the nursing program. Um, we are a bit of a smaller um, faculty and smaller program so you really get to know all of your professors and um, the rest of the people in your cohort so it's definitely a great environment to be in and I love Trent and the nursing program here. Right, that's amazing it's always great to hear that. Oh my computer's glitching there we go um, so I would like to to thank you for sharing that and I'm just going to open the floor now for for general questions. And I think we also have our forensic student here. Um, I'm just going to pass it back over to him and whether he wants to go on audio or in the chat and just talk about why he chose Trent for forensics. And I'd like to thank you again, Julia, for being here to talk about nursing. Thanks. Um, yeah, I'm good for audio. <laughs> um, hi, everyone again. Yeah, I definitely chose um, Trent University as a place for forensics. Honestly, I did look at other schools as well. Um, but what really appealed to me about Trent was um, the joint major opportunity. The fact that I could really just do forensics and basically do it with almost any other course I would want. Um, that really stood out to me. Um, when I actually started in my first year, I was gonna do it with chemistry. Um, and then when I realized that me and chemistry were not exactly best of friends, um, it was very easy for me just to you know, do it with psychology instead. Um, so since then I've been loving it. Um, the faculty is really amazing. And um, yeah, I'm just more than happy that I really just chose this university. 
All right, thanks, Nick. And right now we're coming to a close with our tour and I'd like to thank all of our student ambassadors and our enrollment advisors filming in the lab for sharing that experience with us. But if you do have any questions, please feel free to either unmute yourselves and speak up or pop it into the chat. I'd like to remind you as well that we have our general live chat going on until eight o'clock. So if you wanna go back to that main website, our general live chat is there and open for you to go ask questions about housing, admissions, scholarships, whatever else is coming to your mind if it's not related to our science lab facilities. All right, and a question, Sophia, when is the tuition draw? It will be later on in the year. Um, closer to the beginning of summer is the best answer I can give for you right now. We're not 100% sure when it's closing. It's, it's kind of a soft deadline right now. Oh, in May, there we go. <laughs> All right, I'm not seeing any more questions coming in. So I'm just gonna put one email in the chat there. It's discovertrent at trentu.ca. If you do have any questions later on about sciences or, or anything in general about recruitment, please feel free to email us and we'd be happy to send it your way and answer any questions that you may have. But again, I'd like to thank you for joining us today and I wish you a safe and, and hearty rest of the year.